Okay, I was working on a brochure in my regular job today and thought of something that it would might be helpful for you in your projects. It's an advanced Photoshop technique and it's how to replace an image on a screen. So in this case, I want to use a guy that, or well, it doesn't matter the gender, but I used to, I found a photo of a person that's looking at a, photo, a computer screen and I want to put on that computer screen and the actual website. So for us, I'm trying to put an apply now, but I want to direct him to the graduate college's website at Kennesaw State. So in this space on the computer, I'm going to replace that with a website, a real website. In order to do that, you have to be able to screenshot your website. On a PC, it's slightly different from a Mac, but I'm going to show you this tutorial for a Mac. You will have to Google on how to screenshot for a PC. I think you have to do it with the the print button, but I'm I'm not totally sure. But first thing what I <coughs> excuse me, first thing I want to do is unlock this layer. So I found this photo already. I have Photoshop opened and the layer is locked. I'm just going to double click that lock to unlock it. Alternatively, you can just drag the lock all the way to the trash can. It's up to you on how you get this done. Now I'm going to turn on the polygonal lasso tool. It should look like the jagged edge one, not the regular lasso tool, but the polygonal. So you're going to click on that one. If it's not showing up for you, just right click this area and it's the middle one. And I'm going to select this part of the laptop to delete that part of the, the picture. And all I'm doing is clicking around the screen. And since I have this layer unlocked, I can just hit delete. If you don't have the layer unlocked, then it'll give you problems when you try to delete. So make sure that you follow that first step and unlock it first before you try to delete anything. So when your marching ants are showing, you can either do Command or Control D, or you can go up to Select and Deselect. There's your shortcut, depending on a Mac or a PC, there's your shortcut. So you can go to Select and hit Deselect to get rid of your marching ants. At this point, you'll want to go to your website and copy the website image that you want. So I want this part of the website to show up and then I'm going to Photoshop this part because by the time I pull it in, it's going to be so small you won't even be able to read it. So I'm going to do a screenshot on a Mac, which is Command-Shift-4, and it pulls up this little bullseye. Again, if you're on a PC, it's going to, look, it's going to be different on how you do this. Um, so just Google that part, um, if you could, on how to do a screenshot. But on a Mac, it, it saves to the desktop. It automatically pulls to the bottom of my screen. So I'm just going to drag that little thumbnail and drop it in my Photoshop file. If this doesn't work for you, you can go to File, Place Embedded, and find the file that you just saved. So the screenshot that you just saved on your desktop or your downloads folder, just go find it and place it in your Photoshop file. I dragged and dropped. That may not work for you, um, but just give you some options here. So in doing this, I have two layers now. I have my original layer and I have my new website layer. I'm actually going to lock my original layer just so I don't make any additional changes to that one accidentally. So I just I just click this little lock when the layer's turned on and it'll it'll prevent you from accidentally moving it. So I'm going to move this up and I'm going to adjust it to where it'll fit in this computer screen. The shortcut is Command T for transform. You can also go to edit and free transform and adjust at the corners. In Photoshop you do not have to hold down shift. They actually changed it in Photoshop 2020 that by holding down shift, it removes the, the proportions. So don't hold down shift because it actually does the reverse of what it does in InDesign. So I'm going to rotate it until it fits in the screen the way I want. And hit enter. I'm going to move it up and just kind of 
get it to where it's right. Right now it's overlapping on this side a little bit, so I'm going to get rid of that part. Um, we've learned this in previous classes, but I'm going to show you again. So when this layer one is turned on, I'm going to turn on my quick mask to create a quick mask layer. I'm going to again use my polygonal lasso tool, lasso tool and click along the screen that I don't want that part to show. Then I'm going to turn my paintbrush tool on, making sure black is turned on, and paint it off. and it got rid of that part of the screen that's overlapping on the laptop. So I can go to select, deselect to get rid of the marching ants. And let's zoom in a little bit, which is view, zoom in. So you can see a little bit more clearly what it looks like here. While my quick mask is still turned on and my brush is turned on, I can, I can remove this area a little bit. You can adjust your brush. When your brush is turned on, you can adjust it by hitting right click, changing the size and the shape of the brush and the hardness of the brush. And the cool thing about this is if, if you mess up, you can paint it back on. So see, I just painted it back on. I can go back, toggle this to white and paint it off again. The reason I like the polygonal lasso tool is because it gives me a straight line. See how the brush is making it rounded? I can undo this, go to edit, undo eraser, and again, do the line down and over. And what this does is it creates a barrier for my brush. So I will only be able to brush off in that area. So if I go over here, nothing's going to happen. See, I'm clicking, nothing's happening. But if I click within those marching ants, let me turn on black. If I click within the marching ants, then it'll delete it. And it'll only keep that straight line. See, again, I'm clicking in this area, nothing's happening. So this is going to, pre this is going to create a barrier where I can only delete in that area. Again, I'm going to go select and deselect. So at this point, I still have a part of a screen I need to fill in. So I'm going to create a new layer. It's named Layer 2. And I'm going to fill in this part white. So again, I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to click along the screen. Once I create a solid fill and it, I mean a solid um, line, it's going to create the marching ants again. I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and I'm going to choose White and hit OK. So it's very important that this is on its own layer. If you do it on this layer, if you do the fill while you have this layer or any other layer selected, it's going to cover up your artwork. So by putting it on its own layer, you can move that layer around and move it behind the other website portion. So to get rid of the marching ants, again, you go to select and deselect. And I'm going to move this layer behind this part of the website. So I'm going to click it and move down to where my online application shows up. So there's some error right here. I can adjust that by um, changing the size of my white shape or by deleting the sides like I did up here. It's up to you. You can do a quick mask or you can um, resize. I'm going to try resizing first. So free transform. Just moving it a little bit at a time and moving a little bit at a time over here.
And I'm going to go on the quick mask up on this one and delete just a little bit here so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Turn on my brush tool and delete. Okay. Well, went a little bit too far. So I can undo. And try again. The great thing about Photoshop is nothing is permanent. You can always undo. Whoops. Make sure you're on the quick mask layer. And select, deselect. It has a little bit of a gap, but I think it's okay for now. So I'm gonna just put a little button here that says apply now. So this way when I pull it into my brochure, it's really easy to read. And you can stop at this point and do the rest in InDesign if you feel more comfortable. Um, or you can just finish the image totally in Photoshop. It's completely up to you, but I'm going to finish it in Photoshop. So I'm going to make a shape to, I'm going to do the gold like KSU. Turn on my rectangle tool. I've got my fill color gold and I'm going to grab, create a shape. When I do that, my properties box will automatically show up. This part of the properties is to create curved edges you can drag it this way you know just click on this little icon to where the little mouse becomes two arrows you can drag it and you can see that it's starting to curve or you can manually put the numbers in it's completely up to you if you only want to do one side you can unlock it and just adjust one side at a time okay <coughs> excuse me Next, I'm going to rotate this image. So I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform, and rotate the rectangle to match the website. Hit Enter. And I'm also going to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to go to Effects at the bottom, Drop Shadow. Move this around so I can see it. I want my shadow to be on this side. So I'm just going to adjust the angle until my shadow moves to where I want it. You can also, if you need to, adjust the opacity of the shadow and the distance to get the effect that you're looking for to make it look more like a 3D button. Lastly, I'm going to create a text box that says apply now. Hit the check mark. Turn on my move tool so I can just move it down. And again, go to edit, free transform. And adjust this text layer to be as big as the box and rotate. And I'm just using my arrows to move it over slightly since my Peter's being a little bit slow. And once you get it good enough, you just hit the check mark or you hit enter. And let's zoom out to see what it looks like. So now I have an edited image that has the actual website on there and an apply now button. I'm going to save this in my magazine folder as the Photoshop file. So it'd be under Creative Cloud, PR445 Magazine, and I'm going to call it Website Apply Now. So I'm saving it as a Photoshop file in case I want to make additional changes later. 
Now I'm going to open up my InDesign file where my brochure is housed and I'm going to replace this photo. So I'm clicking on the photo that's already there. I'm going to go File, Place, and place my Photoshop file. And lastly, I'm going to right click and hit Fitting, Fit Content Proportionally. And at this point, I can adjust the image to fit in the space that I want. Can um, turn on my free transform tool, hold down shift, and adjust to the tops. Make sure you hold down shift um, the whole time before you release your mouse. Okay, good. So zooming out, now I have my image on my brochure and I can save the file. This is a good tutorial if you want to put anything on a cell phone screen, computer screen, tablet, etc.